Hello, I'm Raghu Kaluri. I'm going to talk about mixed venous and arterial ulcers and my approach on how I manage uh, these ulcers. This is uh, my disclosure statement. So let's start. So when you look at the total uh, number of uh, uh, patients with venous ulcers, and check their ABIs, you will find approximately 15 to 30 percent of patients who have um, venous ulcers also have arterial disease, and about 13 percent of them will have moderate peripheral artery disease, and 2 percent of them will have severe peripheral artery disease. If you're wondering where that 0.8 limit of ankle brachial index came from that you routinely receive calls from wound care centers and wound care nurses requesting your approval to apply compression therapy on patients with mixed arterial venous ulcerations. Um, this came after the publication in 1986 where they looked at mixed arterial venous ulcers being present in 22% of patients with peripheral artery disease with a mean ABI of 0.62. So based on this observation, it was suggested that ABI of 0.75 would dramatically decrease healing. So the most common questions that you receive is when to compress and when not to compress in these patients and <clears throat> when to use graduate graduated compression socks and when not to. Um, about a decade after the publication uh, in 1986, uh, the folks from University of Bristol published uh, management of mixed arterial venous ulcers, which were contemporary to that time. Uh, they divided patients into three subgroups, normal ABIs, um, severe ABIs, and somewhere mild to moderate ABIs. If patients had normal ABIs, they received standard compression therapy for the management of venous ulcerations. And if they had severe ABIs, uh, they treated the arterial disease, which was contemporary to that time, which is um, angiography and angioplasty or bypass surgery. Anyone who had ABIs in between the two, which is 0.85 uh, or less, received modified compression therapy, and if they failed the modified compression therapy, then they underwent angiography with angioplasty or arterial bypass surgery, depending on uh, what was required at that time. When they looked at 48 weeks and looked at the ulcer healing times, uh, the group one, which is normal ABIs, or ABIs greater than 0.85, <clears throat> um, uh, and people who received either modified compression therapy or um, a follow-up with angiography and angioplasty and bypass surgery, they fared much better than folks who had um, uh, severe ABIs. Uh, another decade after that, in 2007, um, another publication uh, came from the United Kingdom in the management of mixed arterial and venous ulcers. Um, and they looked at a six-year follow-up in uh, wound centers in the United States. Again, these patients were divided uh, with, into three cohorts, ABIs greater than uh, 0.85, uh, ABIs uh, less than 0.5, uh, and uh, moderate arterial disease was defined as uh, ABI of 0.5 uh, through 0.85. And they looked at the ulcer healing times up to 36 weeks, and patients who did not have any arterial disease had a healing rate of 86.8%, while moderate peripheral artery disease patients had 67.6%, and severe peripheral artery disease patients had 53% healing rate, which was significantly different from patients who had no arterial disease uh, and patients who had peripheral artery disease. Um, also, uh, combined 30-day mortality in 
all of these patients with 6.5%, which just demonstrates how fragile these patients are overall in, their, in the terms of their health status. Um, another trial more contemporary to us now um, in 2013 uh, looked at 20 patients with ABI of less than 0.75 uh, treated with compression therapy first and revascularization if the ABI was less than 0.5. And again, in this study as well, healing times in patients treated with revascularization was significantly lower uh, compared to those who did not receive uh, revascularization um, at 16 weeks compared to 24 weeks, respectively, um, suggesting that in patients um, who have significant peripheral artery disease, it's important to revascularize these patients. Um, again, going through the theme that any patient who presents with venous uh, disease needs to have a good arterial workup as well. Um, so what about compression therapy in the mixed venous ulcers? Uh, is, that, is that really harmful? Well, there is this uh, study uh, uh, that uh, looked at 25 patients with uh, mixed arterial venous ulcerations and an ABI of 0.5 to 0.8 and an ankle pressure of greater than 60 millimeters and toe pressures greater than 30 millimeters. So they're not entirely ischemic in the small vessel sense. So in these patients, when inelastic compression bandages, not elastic, inelastic compression bandages, such as UniBoots or uh, four-layered uh, Profor, modified Profor wraps set at 20 to 30 or 31 to 40 or 41 to 50, and they looked at laser Doppler fluxometry close to the ulcer and at the toes, it's interesting to note that uh, the... Um, uh, uh, the flow uh, distal to the bandages in the toes, uh, according to laser flux, wasn't that significantly different despite applying all uh, almost 41 to 50 millimeter mercury pressure. And if you look at the toe pressures, actually there was a slight increase in uh, the uh, uh, toe pressures, uh, uh, as you can see from this uh, plot here. So compression therapy uh, probably increases the venous output in patients who have that stagnation and um, a pooling of blood, uh, removing that, increasing the venous output and increasing the arterial perfusion. And we also know that there are intermittent pneumatic compression devices um, that have been that have been available on the market for a long time. Um, and uh, early uh, uh, reports uh, from Mayo Clinic demonstrated that uh, it, they improve uh, claudication distance, they improve wound healing, they decrease amputation, and it could be used uh, for no option patients and also used as an adjunct uh, for interventional therapies. More recently, uh, in 2017, there was a systemic review and meta-analysis, again, uh, demonstrating pretty much the same. So uh, in, in my practice, if uh, there are patients with recalcitrant uh, uh, mixed arterial venous ulcers who have exhausted their interventions and have diffuse infrapopliteal disease, this is a good option where it helps with decreasing the venous outflow and increasing uh, the arterial inflow. So something to remember in these patients. So uh, to, to sort of summarize um, my practice of mixed etiology ulcerations, if the patient comes in with venous ulceration and I suspect arterial disease, obviously you need to do um, appropriate uh, non-invasive testing such as ankle brachial index with or without duplex uh, depending on you know where uh, we practice um, uh, and whether the patient had preceding angiography or not you know it could be ABI so it's segmental pressures alone but to test for the venous uh, disease, we also um, get the venous reflux test. And if the ABIs are in the severe peripheral artery disease range, obviously the arterial disease needs to be taken care of first. And angiography and revascularization, if possible, is the first step. If the patients don't have any options, then <clears throat> modified gentle compression, which I'll talk about in this group here, uh, plus leg elevation as possible, and 
hand, the intermittent pneumatic compression device or a vein pump or a lymphedema pump, depending on what the clinical presentation looks like. If the patients uh, have flebo lymphedema um, and perfluttered disease, maybe they benefit from lymphedema pump more. If the venous ulceration is large, maybe uh, they, uh, uh, they uh, benefit from a vein pump. But if the arterial disease is more predominant, maybe you need to get an arterial flow device for, to improve the arterial flow with close monitoring and prevent infection, and hopefully that ulcer heals. Otherwise, obviously, the patients go into palliative care or uh, amputation. Um, if the patients are, uh, are having normal ABIs, obviously you would treat them like a venous ulcer. Uh, if the ABIs are even in the mild peripheral artery disease range, you will just treat them um, uh, as you would treat any venous ulceration with two to four layered inelastic compression wraps, wound care, and cautious um, uh, treatments with endovenous therapies. I always say this, that if patients have severe um, uh, or not severe, uh, if the patients have significant uh, infrapopliteal disease. So I actually try to preserve the great saphenous vein if the patients have um, long segment arterial disease or infrapopliteal disease um, as it makes a very good conduit. Now, in patients with peripheral artery disease in the moderate uh, uh, range, um, we recommend gently applied two to four layered uh, compression wraps, again, in elastic with wound care. We tell the patients and educate the patients and the family that if they are complaining about uh, significant discomfort, they have to just remove the wraps and give us a call. Again, similar uh, to the thought process in the patients with uh, mild PAD, and infrapopliteal disease, if you have a long segment arterial disease, I would consider sparing that saphenous vein for a conduit uh, for um, especially a below knee bypass is required, and hopefully the ulcers heal. Once the ulcers heal, once you have the ankle brachial and disease improved, um, uh, consider gentle compression therapy. If not 20 to 30, uh, try 15 to 20 millimeter mercury, at least graduated compression socks to prevent uh, the ulcerations uh, to reoccur or minimize the risk of uh, reoccurrence. Um, hope uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, talk will help in the management of mixed arterial venous ulcers in your patients. I would like to thank the organizers uh, for allowing me to present uh, my practice um, uh, approach uh, to you all. And again, I hope this helps uh, in the management of your patients. Thank you very much.